Development chances continue to grow for that wave way out near Africa, but next week we could have a depression or named system as it moves across the main development region. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and in this video, we're going to talk about that. We're going to do an extensive breakdown of how this system could play out, where it could go, how strong it could get, what the environment is out ahead of it. We're also going to take a look at a little bit of Saharan dust that will be interacting with this system, but we'll also see some of that dust make its way into the north gulf coast of the U.S. and maybe even into the southeast corner of the U.S. as well. Stick around to the end of the video for this, because there's also a little sneaky area that could pop up right near the United States and quickly become a depression or name storm given the environment. So we're going to break that down as well at the end of the video. But the bulk of this, the meat and the potatoes, is going to be that system way out near Africa. Here's the deal. And before we get into this, you see that red there? If you do want to stay up to date on all things hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button. If you find this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. Here is the X. X marks the spot. You notice the change in color, though. We've gone from orange to red. That means the Hurricane Center has updated the chances that this is becoming, that is going to become a tropical cyclone somewhere in this big red area. We were talking about this in a previous video, that this is likely, at the very least, going to become a depression. I'll show you some model forecast in just one second, but it looks like there is a pretty high likelihood now that we are going to get something to develop right here potentially threatening the caribbean islands but there's a couple of scenarios i'm going to break that down for you momentarily want to give you a closer look again it does not look like much right now there's a little swirl in there if you look really close you can kind of see that curl on the northern side there so there's a little swirl this is just a tropical wave it's an open wave right now but as we get it further out into the central part of the atlantic in all likelihood we are going to have this thing consolidate, get a well-defined low-level center, and then become at least a depression. We're going to look at two models first, and then I want to show you some ensemble forecasts to kind of show you the fork in the road, if you will. Some take it towards the Caribbean, some take it out to sea. I will play out that scenario for you in high detail if you stick with me. This is the GFS model, and here it is right here. Again, it's doing a pretty nice job. Again, it's kind of embedded in the intertropical intertropical convergence zone it's a mouthful but here you go as we move towards june 19th you see that little ring there starting to get a little more defined so in just three days from this video this is recorded on june 16th we're looking at june 19th and you see it there it gets even stronger. This is the GFS model now by June 21st. Here, of course, are the Leeward Islands. Here is Puerto Rico. Here is the Dominican Republic. And then you see it get pretty close to the Caribbean Islands before kind of getting even stronger and then lifting to the north. Remember that scenario for me. And then you see it kind of even get stronger still as it kind of gets swung back and flung back up into the North Atlantic Ocean before it eventually weakens. We're going to look at the European model. It has a very similar solution. You see it there kind of trying to go across the central part of the Atlantic. We'll speed it up to June 21st. There is our system right smack dab in the middle of your screen. I'll highlight it with that red circle. Watch what happens, though, as we take it further up towards June 24th. It gets also close to the Caribbean islands. The ensemble forecasts that I'm going to show you in just one second are really going to tell the story here. But we really want this thing to get strong and get strong quick because that is going to give us a much higher likelihood that this storm is going to recurve and go out to sea before it messes with the Caribbean islands or Puerto Rico. So that is going to be one of the scenarios that I am going to show you right now. Let me first show you the European ensembles. And if you're not familiar with an ensemble forecast, basically this is the European broken up into all of its members. You see a lot of lines on your screen. I'm going to tell you what that is. I'm going to explain what that is in just one second. But there are different initial conditions kind of put into the model before it's run. And then each have their own different solution. So what you see here is a distinct fork in the road. Notice we do have some members going towards the Leeward Islands, eventually towards Puerto Rico, even to the Turks and Caicos and to the Bahamas. This is going to be 
your weaker scenario. So if the storm stays weak for a longer period of time, there's going to be a higher likelihood that this starts messing with the Caribbean islands. But note that we start to get different color lines here, the yellows and the oranges. That indicates the lower pressure here. So this is going to be your stronger solution. If we get the storm to be pretty strong out in this realm where you see the crosshairs here, it's going to have a much higher likelihood to turn completely missing the Caribbean island. So this is going to be the European ensemble. GFS, it's overall wants to keep it a little bit weaker, but still tells the same story. Now it does keep it relatively weak for a lot of its life. So even in that scenario, we're talking still, at least the GFS ensembles do give more of a higher alert here for the Caribbean islands. You see it there, the weaker solution takes it towards the Windward Islands, whereas the stronger kind of takes it towards the Northeast Caribbean, maybe towards Puerto Rico. Still though, way out here, you see where this curve is, where my mouse is, where the crosshairs are, the strongest solution curves that well before the Caribbean. Just like the GFS did, its operational model that I just showed you that where all the colors were. I'll go, I'll go back to show you again. This is what the operational model is right there. That's the Euro. But nonetheless, both of those parent models showed that recurve before the Caribbean islands. I do want to be clear, though. That's why it's important to look at the ensembles at this stage in the game because there's hardly any data out there. And some of the ensembles still suggest that the Caribbean islands could be in play. So we're going to watch it. We're going to watch it very, very closely because of this area. We're going to come back to the ensemble forecast a little bit later on in the video to talk about that other sneaky system potentially off of the southeast coast of the United States. There was a little preview for you. I want to show you this little index here, and we're fast forwarding out till Wednesday, and this is kind of the crazy part about this storm. It's in a very weird spot. spot. We talked about it in one of our previous videos. That's a typical August or September system. You see them rolling off of Africa. Look at all this red here. Basically, what this index does is it takes water temperature, it takes wind shear, it takes dry air, it puts it all together. If it's favorable, we get this red color. If it's unfavorable, it's green. Note that in the Northeast Caribbean and then through the main development region here of the Lesser Antilles or just to the east of the Lesser Antilles, it's all basically red. So that storm is going to be moving into a highly favorable environment, which is really, really weird for June because to date, all the way back to the 1800s, less than a handful of storms have developed where this next storm could develop. So this is really, really weird. Uh, really atypical. Look at the water temperature out here. It's nuts. You see their average water temperature, 84 degrees, all the way through here. This is jet fuel for these storms. We are way, way, way above normal for this time of the year in terms of the water temperature as well. Typically, tropical systems like to have water temperature around 80 degrees or hotter to develop and thrive, and that's exactly what we have going there. Now, the other thing I want to point out, we do have a little bit of dust. It is going to be playing with the Saharan air layer a little bit. It's not a ton of dust, but there could be enough to kind of slow its development, which again, as we showed you, if it does stay weak, it has a higher opportunity to head towards the Caribbean islands. So we don't want it to be weak as it approaches the islands. But nonetheless, you see all this white here. Here, here is that uh, dust rolling off of Africa. We already have some of it in the Caribbean towards the Dominican Republic, towards Puerto Rico. If you're watching from those areas, let me know if you are seeing some of that dust. I mentioned earlier that we could have some of it connect to the Southeast U.S. There you go. By June 19th, we have a little bit of it in Florida. It could help to enhance the sunrise and sunsets a little bit. Also in Western Cuba, the Bahamas, towards Cancun, and then also kind of pinwheeling up. Watch, I got a pinwheel towards the North Gulf Coast. And then we have more dust coming towards the Lesser Antilles towards that last week of June. There's June 26th with another round of Saharan dust. All right. So there's the main system that we were watching. There's the dust. Now here's this sneaky little system. If you're watching from Florida, potentially, there's going to be a very active weekend because of this little spiral, this big upper low you see kind of pinwheeling eventually off our coast. Look at this. Here's 2 o'clock in the morning on Monday. Looks a little rowdy here off the South, uh, South Carolina coast, North Carolina coast. This thing looks like it's going to try to wrap up 
and maybe take on some tropical characteristics. So I know a lot of people are already re referring to that main development region system as Brett. You got to be careful because this could end up stealing a name off of the coast, the southeast coast of the U.S. Now, it remains to be seen if it's going to do that. This is not a guarantee here. It's gonna A lot's going to have to come together for that to happen. But what I do want to show you is what uh, I kind of alluded to when I brought that up before. This has both European and GFS ensemble kind of suggestion here. Both of those models, both of those ensembles do have a lot of members suggesting that we can have some tropical development off of the Carolina coast. Now, it's not going to come back to the Carolinas. It looks like it is going to head out to sea. But nonetheless, we could be talking about two tropical systems active at the same time as we get into the week post the week of uh, June 19th. So crazy stuff that we've gone from nothing to all of a sudden it looks closer to the peak of hurricane season with where that system is currently in the Atlantic. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you do love tracking the weather and want to stay up to date on all things tropical weather this hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. If you hit that alert bell, you'll be notified anytime we post new content. And we will catch you next time.